Okay, new space mystery. Another unusual discovery that nobody can explain right now. And actually a discovery we've discussed previously in regards to some of the more unusual objects discovered in the Orion Nebula by the iconic James Webb Space Telescope. You can actually see some of them in this image right here, but for the most part we sort of know what these are. Most of these are just brand new stars, still growing and still developing. But during the more detailed observations of the Orion Nebula, that were actually conducted in several frequencies of the infrared light, James Webb revealed these unusual objects. Okay, they're not like unusual unusual, they're just kind of difficult to explain. All of these were individual planetary objects, but they did not appear to be brown dwarfs, which is usually what we expect to find if we find some kind of a planetary object completely by itself. As a matter of fact, we're going to discuss some of the new discoveries about brown dwarfs in just a few minutes, but in this case, brown dwarfs, these were not. Instead, they appear to be very similar in mass to Jupiter, or sometimes maybe several masses of Jupiter, so much, much, much less massive than a typical brown dwarf. And approximately 500 of these objects have already been identified by the James Webb in just the last few months. And so most of these qualified as free-floating rogue planets. Basically planets that don't really have a star. Something we know does exist out there, and some of these have been discovered, but we've just never seen that many. But out of these 500, approximately 80 of them really stood out. They were actually binaries or basically pairs of planetary objects in random orbits around one another. But once again, these were somewhat similar to Jupiter in mass, with orbits as close as 25 astronomical units or as far as 400 astronomical units away from one another. And so these jumbles were already kind of difficult to explain. We've actually discussed this in one of the videos in the description, but at this point nobody knew how they formed. It made no sense that so many of these planets were basically binaries and very often with very similar masses. As a matter of fact, their formation history could not be explained by your typical protoplanetary disk. There's almost no way to produce these objects through the classical way of producing planets. And so because of this mystery and because they were so unusual, researchers whose paper you can find in the description decided to take a look at this using other frequencies. Can we actually see what else is going on here, possibly figuring out exactly what these are? Because at this point, it wasn't even clear if these were actually planets, unusual brown dwarfs, tiny failed stars, or something entirely different we've never seen before. And since this is in the Orion Nebula, which is essentially our backyard, learning more about these objects was not particularly difficult. A lot of modern telescopes generally have enough resolution to be able to see some details coming from their surface. And so naturally the scientists decided to use radio waves or radio telescopes to try to see what's going on. And this is of course really important because we know that based on the observations from the surfaces of various planetary objects, we can generally tell apart what these are. So for example, any star-like object or even some kind of a failed star is generally going to be producing very specific radio emissions, kind of similar emissions to what we observe from the sun. In contrast, a brown dwarf is going to produce something entirely different, such as for example, massive aurora that have been previously seen from other famous brown dwarfs. As a matter of fact, just as a side note, there was a recent study that, interestingly, was able to even confirm aurora using infrared light using James Webb Space Telescope instead of radio light. And this was the observations from a brown dwarf known as W1935, where the James Webb was able to detect methane being emitted from the surface. And for brown dwarf that's a bit unusual, because normally we see methane absorbing light not being emitted. And more importantly, it also showed us unusual temperature inversion, where basically the deeper parts of the brown dwarf appeared to be colder than the upper parts. Or essentially the temperature was increasing with altitude. And this is what we kind of observe from Jupiter and Saturn in the location where we usually find aurora. And so the temperature inversion, along with the emission of methane, implied very powerful and potentially somewhat unique aurora that were responsible for heating up the upper atmosphere, emitting some of the methane molecules, and very likely making this brown dwarf appear somewhat similar to what you see right here. But since we know aurora generally produce very specific radio emissions, and these radio emissions will usually differ depending on the size of the object, and also obviously the type of the object, that's the main reason the researchers wanted to take a look at those jumbles in radio light. For example, if these are really gas giants, similar to Jupiter, they should be producing gigahertz frequencies, mostly because of the internal magnetic field inside these planets. These are actually the result of an extremely massive dynamo inside the planet produced by hydrogen that essentially becomes a metal. 
And so here they use some of the previous data from the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, mostly because a lot of the observations from this region have already been conducted, and basically started to look for any unusual anomalies. And at first they didn't really find much, as a matter of fact nothing was showing, but then something really strange appeared in one of the pairs. This was coming from one of the objects referred to as Jumbo 24, and it seemed to be the only one emitting really strong radio waves, but was also discovered to be the heaviest of them all, while also having the objects orbiting at the tightest possible orbit. And the emissions here appear to be more or less steady, or basically permanent, with the emissions being relatively strong, somewhere between 6 to 10 GHz. Now if this was coming from the Aurora, we would actually expect these emissions to be varying with time and basically bursting once in a while. This is not seen in this case. Whereas radio emissions that are usually more or less constant are expected to be produced by some kind of a synchrotron radiation or essentially when electrons move really fast or around a very massive body. This is also something we detect from the radiation belts such as the famous Van Allen belts. Because technically these do act like massive particle accelerators. But normally these types of belts would also indicate powerful magnetic fields. And the thing is, in this case, these radio waves were not circularly polarized. Or in other words, they did not come from a region with powerful magnetic fields. And so in this case, this is a bit of a mystery. And on top of this, these emissions are also dramatically higher than anything we've ever seen from brown dwarfs. In other words, the strength here is just a little bit too much. Definitely more than brown dwarfs, and way way more than planets. And so one explanation here was that maybe it's not really coming from these objects, but from something behind them. That also does not seem to be the case. There's an extremely small chance that this is not coming from these objects. And so whatever this binary is, it's really mysterious and is something we've never seen before. It was even potentially proposed to be some kind of a new radio object that we just don't understand yet. Because here the signals are different from typical planets, different from typical brown dwarfs, they also appear to be much stronger and do not come from regions with magnetic fields. It was even at some point suggested that maybe these were pulsars, neutron stars, or something very similar, but that also does not seem to be the case because they would appear differently in infrared light. And so yeah, the only other answer we have, as you're probably typing in the comments right now, is aliens. But that also doesn't really work because the signals here appear to be extremely natural and are not orderly at all. They're very hectic, they are all over the place, and they do appear as something we usually detect from normal cosmological objects. Especially because both of these components seem to emit these radio signals at somewhat similar levels, but with enough difference not to be coming from artificial sources. And so at the moment there's really no answer as to what exactly this is. And since none of the other binary objects produced anything similar, this basically suggests that this is a unique object that's definitely going to be investigated more by other studies in order to figure out what this Jumbo 24 really is. And so it's definitely going to stay a mystery for at least some time. But these types of detections are really to show you how absolutely incredible James Webb Space Telescope really is. It was the first telescope ever to physically see these objects, even though the Orion Nebula is literally our neighborhood. As a matter of fact, it's so powerful that recently, by looking at another brown dwarf, it was even able to detect two different isotopes of ammonia, but also methane and water. This was from an object known as WISE J1828. And even though it's approximately 33 light years away from us, and is actually super cold, it's barely visible in any light except for infrared, with a total temperature of about 100 degrees Celsius, here the researchers even calculated the overall ratio of various methane isotopes specifically methane-14 to methane-15. And that's because this kind of actually explains us how these objects might have formed. Here on Earth, or actually I guess a lot of other terrestrial planets, we normally have approximately 270 atoms of nitrogen-14 for every nitrogen-15. But in this object the ratio was closer to about 1 to 670. Which means that it was able to accumulate much less of that heavier isotope compared to planet Earth or even compared to planets like Jupiter. And to astronomers this actually suggests that this object was very likely formed extremely similar to a typical star, not similar to a planet. Or basically it collapsed into a single object from some kind of a larger gas cloud as opposed to being created from the accretion disk and through accumulation of matter orbiting some kind of a star. And before James Webb none of these observations were ever even possible. Now we can physically trace minute details about every one of these objects and then discover their formation history just based on what we know about other objects, such as different stars and different planets. 
So yeah, definitely mind-blowing, and just after one and a half years of observations with this incredible telescope. But we'll definitely talk more about brown dwarfs and these unusual jumbos in some of the future videos once there are some additional discoveries. And if you'd like to learn more about previous discoveries about other brown dwarfs, including some of the record holders and even the smallest brown dwarfs ever found, check out one of the videos in the description. Until someone resolves the mystery of this Jumbo 24, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt with a James Webb on it in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.